You're listening to That Gratitude Guy podcast with David George Brooke. That Gratitude Guy. Learn about how gratitude turns what you have into enough through stories of motivation and inspiration. Wherever you are in your life and whatever you're going through, That Gratitude Guy is here to help you achieve great things and live a happier, healthier life. Change the way you live today right here with David George Brooke, That Gratitude Guy, starting now. Well, hi, everybody. It's David George Brooke, and I'd like to welcome you to That Gratitude Guy podcast. I am your host, where my mission is to have guests that relate and recall moments of their lives that were propelled and energized by utilizing the power of a gratitude mindset. You can expect to get a deeper dive into gratitude's immense power, a gratitude tip of the show, or maybe a gratitude nugget. You can always come away maybe thinking about how you could become a gratitude believer, and then maybe one or two or three takeaways from today's show and today's guest. My podcast is available every Tuesday morning at 5 a.m. on the Transformation Talk Radio Network and is available on Apple, Spotify, Google, and any other places where you get your podcasts. Please subscribe if you'd be so kind and give me a five-star rating if you like what you hear. I really appreciate that. And then also, people ask me a lot about my gratitude journals, which I'm a big advocate for. To purchase a gratitude journal and to find out more about my gratitude speaking, group coaching, or one-on-one coaching, you can connect with me at thatgratitudeguy.com. So let me get on with the show and introduce my guest. My guest today is a good, good friend of mine. I've known for, gosh, a number of years. I'm going to have him tell us about how we connected back in the beginning when I introduce him. But just some of the things that Rick, Rick Toms has done. He was the founder, president, and CEO of Authentic Ethnic Entrees, a manufacturer and marketer of nutritious, frozen, ready-to-eat ethnic food products. The company focused on the Western U.S., serving over 330 independent grocers throughout the Pacific Northwest and Alaska. He went on to form Limbs for You. He was the founder and president of that, a nonprofit founded in 2009, providing prosthetic limbs internationally to low-income uh, in, low individuals, I should say. A lot of experience as a business owner and sales manager, general manager, account executives, and so forth. And then he moved on to his most recent activity, which I'm excited, and he'll tell you about that in a little bit, and moving to Guadalajara, Mexico, and he plans individual lessons for people that are looking as English as a second language, and he's part of an international teacher's training organization, and in Guadalajara, as I mentioned, he successfully completed four weeks of 140-hour intensive courses with 10 hours of observed teaching, practicing with, practicing with groups with English as a second language learners with various English levels. The course itself is being offered interactive techniques and experiential activities to develop long-term thinking and planning skills required to English teaching institutions worldwide. And what I really like is I like to think I'm doing the same thing as Rick keeps reinventing himself and doing something different and, uh, you know, kind of coming up with a new version of Rick Tom. So Rick, welcome to the podcast. Well, David, thank you. Thank you for that, uh, <laughs> that great opening. <laughs> you bet. You, you know, bet. It, it's, 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 it's interesting to, um, hear someone talk about you and you're, and you're sitting there listening about yourself. Exactly. And, uh, y- you know, it's uh, kind of mind boggling for me. <laughs> it is. It is. I mean, I, I wrote it, but I don't, I don't read it. You know what like, I mean? who, are they, who are they talking about? I was exactly. telling somebody, I was telling somebody yesterday, I, I think it's a pretty common trait that we all have is, for some reason, we always see other people in a better light than we see ourselves. And so sometimes I've had different coaching clients and people I've met after my talks and so forth that, oh, gosh, you're doing this, this and that. And I say, well, tell me about what you've done. And they tell me these great things. And I think, oh, gosh, I've never done that. And it's just so funny. We just don't seem to realize the impact we have on other people uh, as can be so much greater, which is why sometimes it's just why we say things to ourselves we would never say to a friend or call ourselves names or our self-talk. But, uh, but in any case, uh, tell, I always like to start out, Rick, tell the listeners how you and I met. Oh, David, that goes back. Uh, wow. Uh, 10 years ago, maybe. I think so. Uh, in Bellevue, um, it was a uh, mastermind group that mm-hmm. uh, we were part of. Um, I forgot who led it. Um, 
It might have been Barry Zimmerman, possibly. Yeah, yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Barry Zimmerman. Yeah, Zimmerman. And um, and I recall um, you stood up or introduced yourself and in such a way. I said, now I gotta meet this guy. <laughs> I don't care about anybody else in the room. I got to meet him. Oh, I appreciate that. <laughs> and uh, and that's how we met. And, yeah. Uh, and we've been uh, uh, buds ever since. And uh, it's certainly been, uh, I've been certainly grateful uh, to have met you and be in your presence. And uh, and certainly got an opportunity to meet Connor, your son, and and hear the story of your life. And, you know, I've shared the story of my life with you. And uh it's just a truly, uh, it's truly been beneficial to me to yeah, have. Thank you, you. thank uh, you, and and certainly, so. thank you, and certainly likewise too. And I, I think it probably helps that we're just within a couple of years of each other of age. And so when you've been on the planet a, a pretty similar level of decades, I think right. that the shared experiences are just that much more meaningful. You'll talk to somebody you meet and connect with that's half your age. And it's fine, but hmm. they don't have the same level of life experiences, which is something that uh, you and I could share. And then, and then I might add, as far as uh, something else, then that happened as a result of that meeting was a Columbia Tower Club, where <laughs> you were a member, and then I came to have coffee with you there. Said, "Hey, what is this? This is neat." Ended up joining CTC myself. And uh, just recently did a workshop for them down at their headquarters in Dallas, Texas, which very was good. really neat. Very so, good. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank Congratulations. you. And I can, that was for their, uh, thank you. That was for their home office staff. I think about 75 or a hundred people. And they did a one hour training in June. I'm going to do a one hour training in July. So it's two lunch and learns, but uh, tremendous people. And I just remember thinking when you said, well, I said, well, how do I get to join this? Well, you talk to this at this person, this lady, and I talked to her and signed up and you kind of sponsored me and so forth. And so it worked out well. And I think back there, another reason why you and I were attracted to the paths we've been on is we have a very similar mindset. And a mm -hmm. lot of the people you met there, or we met there, uh, yep. very motivated very intentional, yep. very uh, philanthropic, uh, really people that wanted to make a difference. And so so backing up and, and kind of going back, so I love to think and feel how gratitude impacts every person. Back up in the earlier days of Rick, long before I knew Rick Toms, and I want to I kind of have you tell me a little bit about your journey and then maybe how some of the gratitude figured into it or the appreciation or the direction that you went. And maybe go back and start uh, towards the earlier part with that first job where you were the founder and CEO of the Authentic Ethnic Entrees. And what was that experience like? And that was your own business, of course. How was that? That was, um, <laughs> that was quite uh, an eye-opener for me. Um, and what I mean by that, um, I had done, um, as you were pointing out in the resume, you know, I've done a lot of, a lot of different things. And uh, one of the things that um, I discovered uh, actually in starting Limbs for Youth, some of that I wasn't passionate about. It's like, you know, you go to college, you get a degree, you get married, you, know, you do all these things, but these are things. And uh, none of it was I really passionate about. And the two most passionate things I've become, well, I became aware that I wasn't passionate, was that one, uh, Lems for You was a very passion of mine. And then Ethnic Entrees, you know, became a, uh, a very passionate and very motivating factor in my life. Uh, when I met you, uh, gratitude wasn't part of my life. Mm. You know, I, you know, I just did things you know, and not uh, thinking about being grateful or, or like a lot of us, you know, I'm looking at the guy across the street or the, or the, or the woman across from me who was dressed nice and, and it looks good. And, and I don't see myself like that. You know, we tend to look at other people before we look at ourselves. Right. And it's a result of meeting you and getting in touch with gratitude. Mm. Uh, that gratitude now is part of my life. Um, it's something that uh, I'm grateful for. When I wake up in the morning and before I go to bed at night, I thank God for, for being grateful. You yeah. know, uh, so I look I look at life differently now. Mm -hmm. You know, um, thus to move to Mexico, which has uh, allowed me even a further uh, look into my life in terms of in the rearview mirror, and and in the present and, and try and stay in the present moment. And, you know, and I say a lot of this is directly related to you. 
You know, oh, thank you, you. The, uh, the, you talk about the journal. Uh, the journal is very helpful. Um, I'm not uh, as uh, diligent about, about writing in it every day, <laughs> but uh, it puts you on a track mm -hmm. uh, of being uh, of a mindset. And that's what, that's what gratitude is. It's a mindset. Uh, and once you get into that mindset, you know, whether you call it being grateful every day or meditation every day, whatever it is that you're doing, that's a mindset. Gotcha. And it allows you to open up your mind and be a receiver of what the universe has to offer you. And, mm -hmm. I, I, and I'm grateful to you for that, David. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Ivan. Just anything where you can impact lives, and we'll get the looms for you as, a, uh, as an example in just a second. Uh, but it just is so important. You hear people say, I want to make a difference. And uh, I talk mm -hmm. about uh, having an impact, making an impact, and impacting lives, things like that. So anytime you can change the trajectory of somebody's life and put them on a better track, uh, it's interesting. I'll do a, I'm getting back to doing talks in person because for the last 18 months, it's been on Zoom as really? the pandemic. And thank for, for me, thankfully for Zoom, because I've been able to do talks all over the country from, from my own condo in Seattle, Washington. And so Zoom right. has been a big help. But I think it was interesting in person, people would come up and I'd sell the gratitude journals and various books I've done at the table. And, and they've just listened to me talk about a gratitude journal and how impactful it is and how it can change your mindset, as you said, and really keep you focused on what you have versus what you don't have. And I remember this one day, the guy says, is this your personal one? I said, well, yeah, I, of course, write in my own one I have. And, and so he flips through it and he goes, man, you write in this every day. And I said, did you just hear the talk? Were you listening <laughs> to the talk? I mean, it makes me feel better. Why wouldn't I write in it every day? I mean, it's just, sure. it's one of those things and it's, you don't have to take any pill or anything. You just, you know, just write in it and focus on what you have. And as I always say, gratitude turns what you have into enough and it does help you focus on what you have. And so when you do that, it just gets you so much better prepared, I think, for the, the negative gamma rays of, of life yeah. that are coming at us yeah. all the time, too. Yes. So, but Very when you, so. but going back to the entree business, was there, what was kind of the best and the, your, your most favorite and least favorite thing about doing that business? Um, demonstrations of the product, you know, mm -hmm. the way you uh, get the product. Mart or whatever they're they're all have food that they're demonstrating right and uh and that's how you move product and uh so i would go demonstrate the product and mm. uh and it was engaging and i enjoyed it and it was fun and and uh being able to explain the, the process and talk about the ingredients and of course being in the northwest uh, gumbo is uh, not necessarily uh, on the uh, tip of your tongue, right? Yeah, as opposed to being in Louisiana. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so, but, uh, uh, but it was great. It was fun. I enjoyed it uh, very much. So, um, I think uh, for me, uh, the the most, um, how do I say? Uh, experience or uh, eye opener is that to pick your partners well. Mm. You know, pick your partners well. Pick mm -hmm. your partners. Pick mm -hmm. your partners well, and uh, and know who know who you're getting in bed with. Yeah, yeah. Don't get don't get in bed with somebody you don't know or you think you know. Right. Make, make sure you know. Them. And Rick, yeah. is the best thing on something like that without going into any specifics or detail. But is it just a question of due diligence, taking a little more time, doing a little bit more background work, getting to know the person? Is it something just, is time really maybe the biggest factor there, taking your time until you connect with them? Exactly. Mm -hmm. But you, well, yes, because you think you know them, but you don't. Yeah. You know, uh, it's like, um, well, it's like dating. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you think you know the person, then you put the ring on their finger and they turn it to someone else. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wouldn't know about that. No, but neither no. one of us. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting. I, I even look back in a couple of relationships I had and with all due respect to the person on the other side of it is I remember thinking if I had just taken more time, I wouldn't have gone down that road. And that's exactly. where you just get the information you need 
and uh, not to disparage anybody, but it's just that you get more information, you can make a better decision and, exactly. and so forth. So, well, exactly. moving, Rick, moving on from that, um, mm -hmm. I want to talk about something, doing something bigger than yourself. I always like is the limbs for you. Yeah. Uh, tell the listeners about limbs for you, how that came about and kind of what that, uh, what that turned out to be. And I got to be on your board with that, which was fantastic, but tell the listeners a little bit about the limbs for you experience. Well, I've had an opportunity, David, in my life to, to travel extensively. And, uh, and part of that travel was an opportunity to live in South Africa uh, in two and a half years. And uh, on this particular day, I'm in Soweto. Soweto is the largest black uh, community in, uh, in South Africa. It's the home of Desmond Tutu and Nelson Mandela and Winnie Mandela. Uh, so I got a chance to uh, spend quite a deal, bit of time there. But on this particular day, a uh, school bus pulls up. Uh, I'm at a bus stop, basically, and uh, uh, the kids are getting out of school, and this girl gets off the, the bus, and I see she's an amputee, uh, which didn't disturb me. It didn't bother me. But what just bothered me was she had what appeared to be me, a U-shaped wire, like a coat hanger. Mm. serving as her artificial limb. Well, I've wow. never seen anything like that in my life. Now, mind you, my dad was an amputee. He had an artificial limb, you know, and he, he got around very well with it. Uh, but I wasn't in South Africa for that uh, and uh, had no thoughts of a nonprofit, none of that. And um, when I returned to Seattle uh, in 2009, I reviewed the landmark form. Mm, right. And, uh, and so, so the question was, are you in the stands or, or are you on the field? Mm, and, uh, great question. Yeah. And I, I said, well, I'm in the stands, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> which means I'm not playing. Right. And so um, I need to get on the field. And out of that, uh, I uh, decided to go into the nonprofit limbs for you world mm -hmm. and um it, it was life-changing for me wow. uh, it, it was very life-changing and uh, one of the stories i'll tell you is that i knew nothing about artificial limbs nothing absolutely nothing but uh, the universe or god has a way of, <laughs> of clearing the path for you yes if you just get out of the way he'll clear up the path and and put people in front of you and and he did right. that all the way but um, what happened is that um, I ended up in the, the, the Dominican Republic, the DR. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a kid, um, 20 years old, um, an amputee, working 20 hours to 30 hours a week on two crutches and one leg. Wow. And we decided to help him or provide him with an artificial limb. And David, the day he, uh, we went to the clinic and we had the materials and they fitted him, were fitting him with the artificial limb. And there must've been maybe I'll say 10, maybe 15 of us in the room. And when he stood up, I got, I got what God was talking about. And we hear the stories of where he laid hands mm -hmm. on people and they see and all of that. Yep. Uh, those are stories, you know? And, yeah. But I can tell you, for me, those that story came alive. Yeah. That uh, the room, I mean, there was movement and nobody moved, but the room moved. Wow. And, uh, you know, I've been trying to get back to that feeling ever since. <laughs> what I was just going to say, what a pivotal moment when you can remember that, I'm sure, like yesterday. Yes. Uh, something very that, much uh, right. And that was putting place things in the right place for you at the right time and the, the stars align or whatever you want to mention. Exactly. And, and then, but then, but uh, talk a little bit more about where you went from there, because I, I remember when I met you and got involved, as I say, on the board and so forth, you really started to accumulate a lot of limbs and get them out yeah. to people and so forth. And so it really yeah. grew from there, correct? Exactly. Exactly. And, uh, and of course, one of the board members, like yourself, uh, Kent, um, he uh, is an amputee himself. Right. And uh, he does a lot of work in uh, Bogota, mm -hmm. uh, Colombia. And uh, we ship down at least two or three shipments to uh, amputees in, in Bogota. Uh, I spent uh, three weeks in Sierra Leone, 
uh, working with amputees and an amputee uh, soccer team, uh, providing artificial limbs. Got a chance to meet the president's wife in mm -hmm. Sierra Leone. And uh, actually, uh, as you know, uh, was looking to move to Sierra Leone. That's right. That's <laughs> right. I remember. Yeah, I was looking to move to Sierra Leone. And uh, uh, so, yes, uh, it's been uh, very rewarding. Um, and, uh, it's been, um, I've been, and I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the opportunity. I'm grateful for what it gave me. It gave me something that I didn't know I was missing. Yeah. And uh, wow. what was missing in my life was passion. And, uh, and I, I remember when, oh, sorry, when you mentioned specific things, the young man getting off there as a girl getting off the bus, I remember mm -hmm. that very well. And then, as you say, that pivotal moment in the, um, when the young man put on the artificial limb for the first time and the room moved and things. And gosh, we, I think a lot of us look back on our lives and we see those things like that were, that were just, you know, again, you can remember like five minutes ago, it was that impactful. And, uh, but, but I have to think uh, privately be just between you and me, when you talk about spending more time, there's an individual you met with the whole Africa thing that it went a little different direction than you had in mind too. So, you know, you never know. We always want to do our due diligence. You, know? you, just, you just never know. And that's okay. Because, you know, as I've said many times in my talks and different things around gratitude, one of the things I say is, you know, it, it, you've heard it before, you have to see down to appreciate up. You know, you just, you you, if you don't have down, you have no basis of comparison. Exactly. And, uh, You're and so, right. <laughs> and I, I've, I've contended for quite a while that life is like a roller coaster. We've heard that before, but uh, sure. they, really the down parts are where you learn the most lessons. And when you're up high is where everybody wants to be. But when you get back down low again, you want to be up high again, but it's down low where you get those lessons and they're just blazed or embedded on our brain sometimes. And I just think about, uh, gosh, if I had one tenth the knowledge I have now, if I didn't when I was in my twenties, man, what could I do with my life? But you just, but there's, there's no substitute for just years lived and days on the planet. You know, you're absolutely wow. right, David. You're absolutely, you're absolutely right. And uh, I, I'm, I'm totally, I'll use this word again, but I am totally grateful uh, to have reached the age of where I am. Yeah. And I, you know, and be in the physical condition that you're in and the physical condition that I'm in, uh, and the opportunities that this condition gives us. Yeah. You know, we have mobility, we have our senses, you know. Very and, fortunate. Uh, we can, yeah, we can see, we can see life, exactly. you know, differently and appreciate it, yeah. you know, and, and take in you know, the gratefulness of it, you know. Exactly. Um, and and yeah. you see the people that have passed on, whether they're celebrities or friends that you and I have had or whatever, and you think, wow, it again makes you appreciate it. I always struggle whether I, especially in my talks and things, should I tell people how old I am? And typically <laughs> I do. And then I decided, I know what I'm going to say instead. Well, I'll tell you how old I am. I was in the front row to see the Beatles twice in 1965. <laughs> so in 65 and 1966. So you can do the math after that. Yeah, yeah you, but, uh, you figure that out on your own. <laughs> exactly. But, but being healthy, physically, mentally, emotionally, will yeah. tie us into the last thing I want to talk to you about today for the listener's benefit. And that is making the walk us through a little bit, making the decision and then following through on it. It's one thing to make a decision. It's another yeah. thing to follow through, but you've done both and more. And that is moving to Mexico and specifically Guadalajara and then being a teacher of English as a second language. Talk a little bit about that decision and how you made that and how you followed through on that. Well, David, it, it started, um, uh, in uh, July of, uh, of 2019, mm -hmm. when I went to Vietnam. Mm. And uh, I went to Vietnam with the thought and the idea of moving to Vietnam. Mm. Uh, and obviously, I went and spent three weeks there and uh, seeing if I could do it, you know, because, you know, culturally and language wise, it's different, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's while I was in, uh, in Vietnam. Um, I had gone to uh, Guadalajara with Michael uh, about 10 years earlier. And uh, Michael's mother was a uh, English uh, second language teacher and she built a home. She built a home in Guadalajara and, and Michael's sister, uh, Maria, uh, had uh, made sure that that house was kept up and maintained and remodeled. So he called while we're in Vietnam, he calls Maria and said, Richard wants to move to uh, live in a house in Guadalajara. Well, I hadn't 
thought about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm thinking Vietnam. Right. Well, two years later, you know, 2021 or 2019, 2020, I guess it is, uh, we find ourselves in Guadalajara. And uh, David, I tell you, it's been life changing. And I'm totally grateful to be here. Um, it has um, given me the opportunity to even grow more. It's given me an opportunity to reflect on my life. Mm -hmm. uh, and once I made the decision I was going to move here, I, I had been looking at uh, teaching uh, English as a second language. Right. And so once I decided to move here, you know, now I did my research. <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> and I found the school. And uh, the, the interesting things about the school, obviously, here in Guadalajara. And the second part is that they guarantee you a job. Oh, you know? wow. Uh, and uh, they, uh, their the certificate that you get from them is good anywhere in the country, you know, anywhere in the world, let me put it that way. Now, the certificate that you get from the school here in uh, Mexico allows you to teach anywhere in Mexico. Tremendous. Wow. Yes. So I can teach in Mexico City, Acapulco, Puerto Vallarta, Cancun, I, anywhere in Mexico I mm -hmm. can teach. Unlike maybe in the states where if you get the certificate in the state of Washington or Seattle, maybe you won't be able to teach in Seattle. Right, right. But of course, now with the pandemic, all bets are off the table because we're all on Zoom. Correct, correct. Yeah. <laughs> or some plat or some platform, anyway. Correct, correct. But uh, that's that in itself has been rewarding. Uh, I'll give you a, a, just a little side note. My degree was in business education. Mm -hmm. That's what my degree is in. I never taught. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I never taught. <laughs> There's a lot of people with the political science degrees and different things that maybe it never quite, uh, it never quite lined up with what they studied and what they did. But um, somebody, somebody once told me I got a business degree from the University of Washington back in 72. And somebody said, well, even if you do or don't apply it to business, it shows you started something and finished it, which, which is something I, I think is great for people that, and, and I said something, the effect, oh, I know what it was. It was John Kennedy's great line when somebody mm. quizzed him and said, um, don't you think you're a little bit young to be president? Don't you think you should go for vice president first? And this was like mm. 1960 or something. And uh, he says, well, I, I've just found if you settle for second place when first place is available, you'll have a tendency to do that the rest of your life. And so, you know, you got to go for the gusto. And so, well, last thing on uh, Mexico and the teaching, and then we'll get ready to wrap up. What, how did you find the people, when we talk about gratitude and being grateful, the, the students, the, the kids, the adults, the people that are the students, uh, an appreciation for learning English? Is there more gratitude, less gratitude? How do you find the connection kind of with the people that you teach? You know, maybe, I don't know, contrasting to the employees back at the, uh, um, authentic ethnic entrees company or what have you, is it, do you notice, is there more of an appreciation for learning or less or the yeah. same or? Yeah, the, the, uh, the reality, the, the reality is that everybody wants a better lifestyle and a better way of living, mm -hmm. you know, that's True. the reality. In, uh, in countries like Mexico and Chile or India, uh, English, is becoming, you know, obviously the language of the universe. Mm -hmm. And people know that by speaking English and learning English, you increase your opportunities mm. uh, for better jobs, for a better lifestyle, uh, to better, better educate your kids. Uh, so there is more of an appreciation and, and a gratefulness of having the opportunity to learn English. And to have uh, a company, all my students uh, work for companies, American companies here in Guadalajara. And the company pays uh, for their lessons in English. Oh, that's uh, great. Yeah. So I don't teach, uh, let's say, kids. <laughs> I've never had them, so I wouldn't know how to teach them anyway. But uh, all my students are about, I think the youngest is around 27. Mm -hmm. uh, that his, his name is Ivan. Uh, the one thing that I'll share with you is that uh, 
I'm in an agricultural belt, mm -hmm. uh, meaning uh, here in Guadalajara, uh, by the way, is a home of tequila. Mm. Uh, yeah, all the tequila in the world is made here because oh, wow. of, the, of the guava plants. Uh, and the guava plants only grow here. Mm. Uh, however, you know, watermelons, onions, tomatoes, peppers, uh, they're grown right here. Mm. And so it's a, quite an industry. And uh, my, all my students actually work for agricultural companies. Oh, interesting. And um, they all speak English. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, um, most of them are at the intermediate level. Uh, but they struggle with English, just like I struggle with Spanish, you know, mm -hmm. because it's not their native language. But they they have a willingness to learn, yeah, and want to learn, and uh, and not only English, they want to know about America because <laughs> because sure. I'm a native, <laughs> you know. <Sure. laughs> so so uh, so we get to I give them the opportunity to uh, ask me any questions they want, and we talk about different subjects. Uh, that uh, don't, we, it's not always classroom. Got it. uh, it's uh, I give them opportunity to you know ask and say anything they want, and I tell them you know my thoughts on America, and, and um, yeah, and, and I enjoy it. I I enjoy it. Uh, it's it's also part of coaching, <laughs> David, mm -hmm. <laughs> which you're familiar with. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Yes, yeah, it's, yeah. it's interesting. A little more holistic. You're looking at sort of personal, professional, yeah. private, you know, business, whatever you want to call it. They just maybe more than just here's how we learn the language and things. And it must be interesting too for them. It is. Um, one of the things that I, I share with them uh, off the top, they're all college graduates. Mm. And I let them know up front, both male and female, said, listen, let me tell you something. You're a professional. Mm -hmm. You have a degree. The company hired you. Your colleagues in America have a degree and the, co and the company hired them. Right. Okay, so you and them are on the same level. Each of you have a respect for each other because you're professionals. So mm -hmm. start there. Ah. And then I, then I tell them, I say, you got one leg up. You're bilingual. Mm -hmm. You speak two languages. We only speak one. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's a good point. That's a, that's a good thing for them. That's definitely well, yeah, a bigger benefit. You benny. see the chest moves out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, well, we're going to wrap up. Let me, um, let me ask you my, one of my favorite questions is kind of the sure. final, and then I'm going to cover a couple of takeaways that I got from you today, which I so appreciate you being on the podcast. Always, uh, David. Always. For you, any, anything. Oh, thank you. It. Thank you, Rick. <laughs> um, I love this question. It, whether people admit the age they are or not, doesn't matter. Or whatever age I am, you are, it's not that big a thing. But, but what do you know today, if you could just pick one thing you would have liked to have known at 18? Wow. That I was going to live this long. Hmm. I had no idea, David. I had no idea. And knowing you as well as I do, what's neat about that is you made, like I like to think I have, good decisions to take care of yourself. So if you did live this long, you wouldn't have to be the Mickey Mantle. If I'd known I was lived this long, I would have taken better care of myself kind of right. thing. And, and you right. and I have talked a lot about health and fitness and taking care of exactly. yourself physically, mentally, emotionally. And, uh, and just one thing alone, exercise is at the top of every list of, of things exactly. and so forth. So, exactly. but speaking of takeaways, let me just mention a couple of things and then we'll wrap up. Here's some things that I really like that you said in terms of just the listeners grasping for a nugget or a gratitude nugget, be grateful. You talked about that a number of times. Keep trying new things. I look at the yes. things you didn't go work at ABC company for 45 years and get a gold watch. Um, another, that was a cut, second one. Another thing, know that the, the pivotal moments will come. Be patient. You think when he put yes. that, uh, that artificial limb on um, yes. prosthetic for the very first time. And then I also like reflect on my life. It's given you a chance in Mexico, uh, research, the school, English as a second language, walking you through the steps down there. Everybody wants a better lifestyle and understanding that uh, interesting, our native language, English is, as you say, is kind of becoming the, the language of the world, if you will. So that's Maybe we can be grateful and blessed that we already know English and it was just part of our, our language growing up too. So, exactly. So exactly. Excellent. So excellent, excellent takeaway. So, so thank you so much, Rick, for being on the podcast. I appreciate it. 
And that's David, a, love you, man. Anytime. Oh, thank Anytime. You, Rick, love you too. And <laughs> there was a couple of the takeaways. And so uh, just a couple of last reminders. My podcast is available every Tuesday morning at 5 a.m. on the Transformation Talk Radio Network and is available on Apple, Spotify, Google, and other areas or other places rather that you get your podcast. Please subscribe and give me a five-star rating if you like what you hear. I appreciate that. To purchase a gratitude journal or find out more about my gratitude speaking and coaching, you can connect with me at that gratitudeguide.com. And also, if you'd like to receive the Monday morning minute, I send mm. out a video every Monday morning at 645 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Just go to your text and to text in the number 22828. That's the number 22828. And in the message box, type in gratitude guy, all one word. It'll send you a link and then you'll get signed up for the video. And also as an exclusive for my podcast listeners, I'm offering my six month proprietary gratitude coaching program that can transform your life for the three month price only for my podcast listeners. Just email me and let me know that you heard about it on my podcast. So finally, thanks for tuning in. And until next time, I'm David George Brooks, that gratitude guy. And remember, be grateful and never quit. Never quit. Take care. <laughs>